What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome to my channel today. I am here on the site for ESPN's Capital One Bowl Mania, and you guys know what that means. It's time for my 2022-2023 bowl game predictions here. I'm going to be going through every single bowl game that is not part of the New Year Six, doing a short little preview and predicting everyone. I have not written anything down. Uh, just coming off the top of my head here again, I've been busy with finals. Um, yes, I have read about each of these games. I've read previews and everything. So I have a little bit up here, uh, but I have not written anything down. And I may have forgotten about some of these matchups. So I'm purely going off the top of the head here today. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for the support on the channel this year. Let's close out 2022-2023 season with a bang here. Uh, this should be a really fun bowl season. To make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Do anything like that to help support the channel. And without further ado, let's dive on in. The first game going to be kicking off bowl season here. Oh, uh, by the way, I am in the central time zone. So all times you see on screen are going to be in central standard time. So convert those to whatever you need to convert them to. But kicking off bowl season, fairly interesting matchup here between the Miami, Ohio Redhawks and the UAB Blazers. Both teams here had their struggles this year, but both of them have found their way into a bowl game. And I think UAB is going to come out here, play a better style of football, and the Miami, Ohio Redhawks don't have Gabbert to lead them at the quarterback position. He is in the transfer portal. So I do like the UAB Blazers to come in here and be able to pull that game off. Uh, Dwayne McBride, if he plays it in this game again, I'm not sure some of the players that are playing are not playing. Some of them I do, but a lot of them I don't. Uh, I'm overall going to pick UAB here to go ahead and win this game. And then, oh my goodness, um, could be one of the matchups of bowl season here. The Duluth Trading Cure Bowl, the UTSA Roadrunners, and the Troy Trojans. Yeah, both teams ranked inside the top 25. Both teams had phenomenal seasons, and both teams conference champions along top of everything there. Uh, those guys are going to be battling it out here in the Cure Bowl. This should be a lot of fun. This should be one of the more fun games to watch in bowl season. But the way that Troy has finished out the year, their offense is finally starting to piece things together. And that defense has played so well all season long. A lot of credit to what Frank Harris and uh, Jeff Trailer are doing over there at UTSA. But I like the way that Troy has played this year. Just a little bit better, so give me the Trojans to win the Cure Bowl. Defense is going to win them that game, mark my words. All right, going into the Saturday slate, you got the Cincinnati Bearcats and Louisville Cardinals. Interesting little matchup here because Cincinnati and Louisville both losing their head coaches. Of course, Luke Fick will go into Coach Wisconsin, but Louisville's coach, Scott Satterfield, is coming over to Coach Cincinnati. So a very interesting storyline here, uh, but I trust the Cincinnati, even without Luke Fickle, I trust the Cincinnati defense more, uh, and I trust that Cincinnati, even, again, without their two head coaches, really is kind of a coin toss game right here. Uh, but Cincinnati, I do believe, will come away here and win, win this game. I think they've been the more consistent team, um, and I, I think they match up really well against the Louisville Cardinals. So give me the Bearcats to win that one. The Celebration Bowl, this one's going to be pretty quick here. I do think it's going to be a lot closer of a game than a lot of people think. I am going to go with the majority here and pick the Jackson State Tigers. I know they're not going to have uh, their quarterback, Shador Sanders. I know they're not going to have Dion on the sideline and a lot of other players that are transferring over to Colorado with Dion, where he will be the head coach. So North Carolina Central is going to give them a really, really good fight here in this game. But Jackson State, I think even still, uh, will come out here and win a pretty close matchup. So I like the Tigers to finish off uh, the season undefeated uh, and win the Celebration Bowl there. All right, moving on. The SRS Distribution Las Vegas Bowl. This is a pretty intriguing matchup to me, uh, but I am going to go ahead and pick the Oregon State Beavers. Why? Well, the way that Oregon State has closed out this season really, really well. Uh, I really like the way that Oregon State has closed out this year, and I really like the football that they've played this year. And for Florida, well, they're not going to have Anthony Richardson uh, under center and not having... Uh, a player of his scrambling ability against an Oregon State defense like this is really, really important. You will have Jack Miller starting at quarterback, uh, but I, I don't know. Again, Jack Miller, I believe this is kind of the first time uh, th that he's starting for the Florida Gators, 
uh, if not from my knowledge, uh, one of the very few times that he's played in a Florida Gators uniform this season. So, uh, again, he may get the calling card to start in later years, but as of right now, I'm not going to say this is necessarily a humbling experience for Jack Miller, but I think it's going to be a tough game for him to be able to pull out on his own. Going to need some help from the defense, and I think Oregon State is going to get this job done. Still with the Saturday slate, as Saturdays are still for college football, even in bowl season, you got the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. Hey, this is going to be really an intriguing, fun matchup. You got the Fresno State Bulldogs, conference champions of the Mountain West, facing off against the Washington State Cougars. And I like the Cougars to pull what the the uh, other people picking bowl games here seem to consider an upset. Look, uh, hold on. Let me pull up lines really, really fast here. But um, taking a look at these two teams here, I just think Washington State's going to be able to outplay. They're a very gritty team. Uh, they play really hard. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so Fresno State is the three and a half point favorite. I think Washington State's going to come out here and surprise some people. This game definitely is going to be close. I don't think that's any mystery to anybody, but I do think Washington State is going to come out here and win the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. So that's my pick for the LA Bowl. Um, I, I didn't have to think too long about this one. I didn't even know that Rice was playing in a bowl game, to be fully honest uh, with you. Probably should be Army here in this poll, but two former... Or, or, or I guess a Conference USA foe facing off against a, my apologies, former Conference USA foe in the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. And Southern Miss had a pretty solid season first year in the Sun Belt. I think they're going to come through uh, and win this game here against the Rice Owls. Probably, in my opinion, not a very competitive game. I think Southern Miss going to be able to run away with this one a little bit in the Lending Tree Bowl. Got a couple more here on Saturday. This one is really, really tough to predict for me. I got the SMU Mustangs and the BYU Cougars. This one is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this is a 6.30 Central Time game, ABC. It gets the prime time slot, if you will. Uh, SMU right now is the four-point favorite, uh, which I can definitely see why, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the voters here. I'm going to pick the BYU Cougars to be able to pull this win off. I just think BYU has a little bit more pieces, especially on the defensive end, and I know at SMU's offense can be pretty solid, uh, and it has been under Rhett Lashley this year. But I think BYU is going to come into the New Mexico Bowl and get this job done. So I like the Cougars to be able to maul the Mustang. Well, not maul. I think it's going to be a, a very good game. But I like the Cougars to beat the Mustangs. How about that? And then in the Frisco Bowl, a little, little bit of sneaky home field advantage here for the North Texas Mean Green as the game is being played in Texas. But I see no reason why the Boise State Broncos do not win this game. Uh, North Texas is without a lot of weapons uh, that they played with uh, last last season. Now, Austin, Ani, Allen, however you say his last name, has been really good for North Texas this year. They're going to need a big game for him, or from him to be able to win this game. But since Boise State made all those changes early in the season and with Hank Bachmeyer transferring out, it's benefited Boise State almost tenfold. They made their conference championship game. Were that close to getting the job done. Just got outplayed by Fresno State. Give me the Broncos here to go ahead and win the Frisco Bowl. So there goes your matchups on Saturday. No matchup, of course, on Sunday. You got to save room for NFL football. How about this matchup in the Myrtle Beach Bowl? UConn back in a bowl game here. Is they're going to be facing off against the Marshall Thundering Herd. Really, really tricky game for Jim Mora's Huskies here uh, to go ahead and win. And Marshall is the 10-point favorite. If I was a betting man, which currently I am not, uh, I would bet UConn to go ahead and beat that spread. But I would not bet UConn to win outright. This is a very young UConn team. It's been pretty solid this season. That is for sure. And sometimes it has been really, really good. But Marshall, I think, has too much talent. I think they're going to outplay the Huskies. The Huskies may show more fight and may look like the overall better team, but I do think Marshall is going to be able to come away here and win the Myrtle Beach Bowl. A little bit too much talent for the UConn Huskies to handle, which now look, UConn's been proving people wrong all season long. They could definitely do it again here, um, and maybe that young talent shows out for UConn. I just don't think they're going to be quite able to get that win. Love the job that Jim Mora has done at UConn. I don't think it's going to be enough to get past the Marshall Thundering Herd, who had a very successful season first year in the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, and that is a game 
on Monday the 19th. Tuesday the 20th, you got a couple of games here, and this one is a very tricky game. You got the Eastern Michigan Eagles and San Jose State Spartans. This one's going to be very, very tough to predict. Um, both teams have had really, really good seasons. Uh, Eastern Michigan just missing out on their conference championship game. Of course, you see San Jose State there only uh, playing um, only playing 11 games because uh, they did have a game get postponed uh, and then outright canceled. Um, th this really is a toss-up for me here. I think this one could go either way. I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, man, this is a really tough one to go ahead and predict. I'm going to go ahead and say the San Jose State Spartans. All right, I just think that San Jose State going to be able to get this job done. I do think they have a little bit more talent than what Eastern Michigan has on that team. And um, hey, 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 but uh, bowl season's all about chaos. This game is going to be very, very close. Could see a very shocking ending uh, in this one. Could see a miraculous ending in this one in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Really, really hard game to predict. I could lean either way on this one, but I'm going to go ahead and lock in my final prediction with San Jose State. In the roofclaim.com Boca Raton Bowl, uh, you have the Liberty Flames and Toledo Rockets. Liberty has been a fishbowl team all season long, and they just lost their head coach, Hugh Freeze. Maybe they play different without Hugh Freeze at the helm, uh, but because Liberty being that fishbowl team, look, Toledo is a very, very solid team, uh, but uh, with Daquan Finn, his dual threat ability against this Liberty defense, that well, has been shaky at best this season. I'm going to go ahead and say that the Rockets are going to be able to win this game here. Did end up uh, winning, I believe, that conference championship game, champions of the Mid-American Conference. Uh, I believe here that Toledo is going to be able to go win the Boca Raton Bowl over the Liberty Flames. So there are your matchups on Tuesday. Matchup here on Wednesday. Um, didn't really have to think too hard about this one in the RL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Give me the South Alabama Jaguars. That has been a very impressive South Alabama team this season. Uh, even with the loss of Jalen Tolbert from last year, this team has come out and probably should have been a team that we saw in the Sun Belt Conference Championship game. It did not work out that way. Would have been a lot of fun to see the Jaguars in that uh, championship game. Sadly, they didn't make it, though, but this is a very, very talented South Alabama team. Don't count the Jaguars out. I know Western Kentucky might be the bigger brand name of sorts. Um, and to me, I know that 8-5 eight, eight and five record speaks volumes to some people. They did not play in the conference championship game, though. They did play 13 regular season games. I do think that South Alabama has played better football this season. I think they will do so on Wednesday. All right, moving on down here. This is a hard game to predict, in my opinion, here as well. You got the Armed Forces Bowl, and an Armed Forces team is playing in the Armed Forces Bowl. How fitting is that? The only Armed Force team to make a bowl game, and that is the Air Force Falcons. They're going to be squaring off against the Baylor Bears. And look, th this is going to be a tricky game to predict. Air Force has had really, really good success this year, and Brad Roberts is an absolute machine. Um, and Baylor not necessarily has been the team that we saw win the Big 12 last season. However, Baylor has had their moments this year where they've looked pretty solid and they've looked like a really pretty darn good football team. So I think Baylor's going to fight. I think Baylor's going to pick their way through. I think eventually they're going to be able to slow down what Air Force is going to be able to throw at them in that triple option offense. And I do think the Baylor Bears are going to come away victors of the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. Uh, and that game is going to be, of course, on Thursday, the 22nd. Moving on to the 23rd, you got the Louisiana Raging Cajuns and the Houston Cougars, two teams this year that really disappointed. This is the Independence Bowl uh, on Friday, the 23rd. Uh, Houston right now, the seven-point favorites. I'm going to go ahead and agree with that line and agree with the majority of uh, bowl game pickers here. I just think that Houston... Too talented for Louisiana. Louisiana lost a lot coming out of last season. Uh, and Houston, I know they haven't lived up to expectations yet this year, uh, but I do think that they will be ready to play in the Independence Bowl. I think they're going to be able to win this game. And then your second matchup on Friday the 23rd, it's the Gasparilla Bowl. The Missouri Tigers and Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Wake Forest may surprise some of you out there to find they are only the one-point favorite. Now, 
I'm not sure if Sam Hartman or A.T. Perry or some of those um, other players there are have opted out of playing uh, in that bowl game there, but um, let's go ahead and uh, check that out, actually, because now I'm uh, pretty curious here. Um, no? All right, so Sam Hartman looks like he's playing. That's enough reason for me to pick the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. With Sam Hartman at the helm, they are just a different team, especially on the offensive end. A.T. Perry can have a really big game and get past this Missouri defense that has been just kind of okay this upcoming season. Uh, Brady Cook, though, could have a pretty solid game. Uh, Missouri ended up winning four of its last six, so they probably are the hotter team. Um, but I do think that Sam Hartman makes a big difference, and it's why Wake Forest will win this game. Moving on to Christmas Eve on Saturday. No football on Christmas as it is. Um, <clears throat> my apologies. No football on Christmas as it is Sunday, so it will be a day for NFL football. You got the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders and the San Diego State Aztecs. Ooh, pretty interesting matchup here. Um, the, this one can be a surprise. Middle Tennessee, or, or the, my, my apologies, let me go to the other end. San Diego State has been a team that has not really played true to their identity this season. There was a lot of people expecting the San Diego State team was going to be better, and they really disappointed this season. Um, really no other way to put it. There were some a lot higher expectations for this program under Brady Hoke, and it just didn't happen, did not deliver. Middle Tennessee, I did not think this team was going to be very good, yet here they are. They find themselves in the Hawaii Bowl, playing in the postseason. And uh, honestly, this thing could sway either way. I think, though, ultimately I am going to go with the majority of voters and pick the San Diego State Aztecs. I think they're going to win just by a slim margin. This is going to be a pretty close game, though, but I honestly could see either team running away with this game as well. Very intriguing matchup, but give me the Aztecs to win that game. Again, like I said, no games on Christmas, so we move forward here. How about the Mexico State Aggies and Bowling Green Falcons, two teams that maybe not a lot of people thought were going to make a bowl game, and now they're facing off in the quick lane bowl. Uh, I'm not going to think too long about this one. Give me the Bowling Green Falcons. Uh, my apologies, don't know what my mouse was doing. I really like the way that Bowling Green has played this year. Uh, New Mexico State definitely has not played the caliber or caliber of opponents, maybe besides the Liberty Flames that Bowling Green has had to endure in the Mid-American Conference. That's just my opinion, though. I don't know what the metrics have to say about that. Uh, the metrics probably don't really like these teams in terms of their FPI ratings, but I am going to go ahead and go with the Bowling Green Falcons here uh, to get the job done and um, uh, spoil New Mexico State's hopes of being above 500 this year. So now moving into Tuesday, you got the Buffalo Bills and Georgia Southern Eagles. Both these teams uh, have been more impressive than I thought they would be this season. And um, both these teams find themselves here in the Camellia Bowl. Um, Kyle Van Trees has been really, really good as the quarterback of Buffalo this season. Uh, but Georgia Southern has had some really good success this year as well. This one, another tough game for me to pick here, but I'm actually going to go against the majority of voters here. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the Georgia Southern Eagles. Uh, only 39% of voters seem to be riding with Clay Helton. I think I'm going to go ahead and take Clay Helton's side here on this one. Say what you will about Clay Helton and uh, how a lot of people think how bad of a coach he is and things like that. But uh, Georgia Southern, I'm telling you what, I think they're going to come out here and they're going to be able to win this game. So I'm picking Georgia Southern to beat the Buffalo Bulls. All right, scrolling down here. Uh, another game on Tuesday, it looks like the Memphis Tigers and Utah State Aggies. Very intriguing bowl game right here as well. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead, uh, again, this is the first responder bowl. I'm going to go ahead and pick the Memphis Tigers here in this one. I think the Tigers are a little bit more talented uh, than what Utah State uh, has shown this season. Utah State really hurt, uh, hurting this year after the loss to all of those wide receivers that really helped that offense out last season. And I think Memphis is going to come in here uh, and be able to win this game. So I like the Tigers to beat the Aggies. All right, keep scrolling on down here. Going to try to move a little bit faster. Battle of teams with Carolina in their name. You got Coastal Carolina and East Carolina in the Birmingham Bowl. Look, this is going to be a fantastic game. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Grayson McCall is going to be able to start in this game. Now, it does seem like... Um, uh, 
uh, Keaton Mitchell and Holton Aylers are going to play for Coastal Carolina. And just with the uncertainty of whether or not Grayson McCall is going to get the green light to start this game, even, you know what? I'm going to be bold. I'm going to tell you this right now. Even if Grayson McCall starts this game, I think East Carolina is going to pull off this win here. I think this is going to be a huge win for the Pirates. Coastal Carolina has kind of fallen apart in their last two games. They've let their they've let the games get away from them. Now, again, if Grayson McCall comes out here to start, this is definitely going to be a lot more of an intriguing matchup to watch. If Grayson McCall does not get that green light, though, I expect East Carolina to win. If Grayson McCall does get that green light to play, I think it's going to be a very close and competitive game. But either way, man, I got the Pirates pulling this one out and winning the Ticket Smart Birmingham Bowl. Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl. My apologies. We continue on. Wisconsin Badgers and Oklahoma State Cowboys. Both of these teams will not have their starting quarterbacks this year. Wisconsin uh, will be without Graham Mertz and Oklahoma State will be without Spencer Sanders. Both teams entered the transfer portal. Graham Mertz recently committed to go playing for Kentucky. And as of my knowledge right now, Spencer Sanders still undecided about where he wants to play football next season. This game on Tuesday, the 27th, the guaranteed rate bowl. Um, neither team is going to really have a quarterback in this game. However, I do think that Shane Illingsworth is a lot better of a quarterback than whatever Wisconsin is going to field. However, the Badger defense has been a lot better of a defense than what Oklahoma State has been this year, really showing uh, that they are missing Jim Knowles. So um, let's see, which way do I want to lean with this? I'll go ahead and lean the way of the Wisconsin Badgers and Big Ten bias, you throw out whatever you want. I don't care. I think Wisconsin's defense is going to hold up against this Oklahoma State offense. And the Badgers, I think, are going to get the better of the Cowboys in the guaranteed rate bowl. How about the military bowl? The UCF Knights and Duke Blue Devils. I like the way that UCF has played football th this year. I really, really do. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the UCF Knights go ahead and win this game. I've been very impressed with what Mike Elko has been able to do in his first season as the head coach of the Duke Blue Devils. I did not think this team was going to be very good at all, and they have proved me wrong in numerous, numerous different ways. Um, and no matter who starts for UCF, whether that's uh, Mikey Keene or John Rice Plumley, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's going to be John Rice Plumley. Uh, you have Riley Leonard on the other side there for Duke. This is going to be a fairly interesting game, but I do like the UCF Knights to come out on top of the military bowl as we keep on scrolling down for your matchups on Wednesday. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. The Liberty Bowl. Great to see Kansas back in a bowl game uh, under Lance Leipold. And Arkansas is a team that just underperformed this season, right? A lot of people expected Arkansas to be there towards the upper echelon of the SEC. And a couple tough games for them this year led them in the opposite direction. In fact, they went six and six. Same record that Kansas was. So two teams that kind of trended in opposite directions this year, meeting in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. This is going to be another yet fascinating game to watch. Can't wait to see how this one goes. Getting uh, Jaden or er, getting Jalen Daniels back for Kansas is huge, right? Getting them back uh, is huge, right? Uh, but uh, Arkansas is having a couple players leaving this game. You have Bumper Pool. He's not playing. You have Jaden Hazelwood. He is not playing. And Barry Odom, Arkansas's defensive coordinator, is not coaching this game as he just took the head coaching job at UNLV. So a lot of losses here for the Hogs. Kansas is going to be all in on this game. Give me the Jayhawks to win this one. Pull off the upset against the Razorbacks and complete what many may consider a miraculous season, but a huge step forward for the Kansas Jayhawk program. All right, the Holiday Bowl. North Carolina Tar Heels and Oregon Ducks. Who's going to come out on top and win this game, huh? Uh, well, both both teams have had um, well, both teams have had their losses uh, committed, right? Uh, Drake May is coming back though. He is playing uh, in in this game, and Oregon. Well, we're unsure whether or not Bo Nix will be playing in this game, right? It's kind of dependent on if he wants to play another year in the green uh, and yellow. So this, I think, is going to be an interesting game. A lot of things may depend on if Bo Nix plays, but even if Bo Nix doesn't play, this North Carolina defense has just been so unimpressive 
to me this season. Um, and I know Oregon just had Justin Flo enter the portal. There are still a lot of good defensive players on that side of the ball for Dan Lanning. So give me the Ducks to win the Holiday Bowl against North Carolina. All right, the Texas Bowl. Again, a little bit of sneaky home field advantage here for the Texas Tech Red Raiders, who, in my opinion, have overachieved uh, in the first year uh, head coach, I believe, named Joey McGuire. Uh, and then Ole Miss, maybe a little bit of an underperforming year uh, for Lane Kiffin standards based on what he did last year. But this is kind of around where people expected Ole Miss to be this year. So um, Ole Miss coming in here, not directly the Texas Tech's backyard, but hey, they're in the state of of Texas, and we know how seriously the state of Texas takes their football. I'm going to go ahead and pick the Ole Miss Rebels here, though. I think with Quinshawn Judkins, the way that he has played this year, with the way that Jackson Dart has played this year uh, as well, and this Ole Miss defense just continues to get better, I think they're going to be able to slow down this Red Raider offense enough. Quinshawn Judkins has a big game, and Ole Miss wins the Texas Bowl. In the games now played on Thursday, how about this for an intriguing matchup? We got the Syracuse Orange and Minnesota Golden Gophers. Both teams started to fall a little bit. Uh, base, uh, both teams started to fall a little bit towards the end of the season. Syracuse, of course, we know started six and zero, and then were one and five in their last five games. Again, the, comp the, the competition definitely did get better in those last five games, but uh, Dino Babers and company making a bowl game with Syracuse. And then Minnesota, uh, look, uh, Tanner Morgan has gone by the wayside here in this game. Uh, you do still have Mo Ibrahim here, uh, but he could definitely declare for the draft. Um, but quite frankly, neither team here has been easy to predict all season long. I just think with the way that Garrett Schrader uh, and some of those wide receivers play for Syracuse, I think that's going to be the big difference maker here. I'm, I'm going to pick the Syracuse Orange to go ahead and win the Bad Boy Mowers Pinstripe Bowl. So I'll go ahead and predict that. The Cheez-It Bowl, I think this one's pretty easy. Oklahoma's underperformed this year. They've not really played up to standard, and Florida State just is continuing on that climb. So I do like the Seminoles to be able to come in here and win the Cheez-It Bowl. Uh, not, not much else to it, but Jordan Travis, been a really solid quarterback for Florida State this year. That run game for the Seminoles has finally, finally figured things out. And for the Florida State Seminoles, I think this is going to be a game where they can show everyone maybe they're not back to national championship caliber yet, but Florida State is back on the rise. Give me the Seminoles to win the Cheez-It Bowl as we continue down the Alamo Bowl. Now, this one is tricky to predict. This one is very tricky to predict. You have the Texas Longhorns who, look, are going to be, quite frankly, without a lot of really good talent. Um, you have Bijan Robinson and Roshan Johnson, neither of which are playing in this game, which is a little problematic if you are the Texas Longhorns here. And with Quinn Ewers, uh, 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 now with Quinn Ewers at quarterback, this is definitely a lot more effective of an offensive football team. But something in my bones, something in my gut is telling me that Washington is going to come in here and pull off a surprise. So I do have the Washington Huskies coming in to the, to the Valero Alamo Bowl and being able to beat the Texas Longhorns. I think Michael Penix and company going to have a really big day on the offensive end. Give me the Huskies to be able to pull off this win against Texas. And as we continue to go down the Dukes Mayo Bowl, who will win this matchup, huh? The Maryland Terrapins and NC State Wolfpack, a very interesting matchup in it of itself. Uh, Maryland definitely does not play, uh, or rephrase that, Maryland does play really, really hard. Every game in, um, they've battled with some of the better teams in the Big Ten this season. Um, and yes, the results have not gone the way they've wanted to, uh, but NC State's kind of fallen these last couple weeks. Now, they were able to beat North Carolina, uh, they were able to get through that hurdle. And NC State's defense has been really good all season. So I'm going to go ahead and rely on the Wolfpack defense to be able to get that job done. Uh, hold on one second. Something came unplugged. I got to plug back in. All right. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Continuing uh, to move on here. The, uh, the Pittsburgh Panthers going to be playing the UCLA Bruins here. Um, this is a pretty intriguing matchup here as well. Uh, 
let's see. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and side with a lot of voters here on, on, on this game. And I'm going to go ahead and say the UCLA Bruins are going to be able to get this one done. I just think with the way uh, that they have played uh, this, uh, I just think with the way uh, that UCLA and Dorian Thompson-Robinson have played so far this season, uh, Pitt not really lived up to expectations. Still, pretty solid record there of 8-4. and four. Um, uh, But with Keaton Slovis transferring for another time, Pitt going to have to dig into that quarterback room again. It hurt him last year. I think it'll hurt him again this year. Give me the Bruins to win that game. Oh, man, how about this one, huh? The Notre Dame Fighting Irish and South Carolina Gamecocks are going to be facing off in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Um, this is a pretty intriguing matchup here. Uh, South Carolina has been hot in their past couple of games and knocking off teams like Tennessee, knocking off teams like Clemson, uh, simplifying the college football playoff con conversation. Uh, but Notre Dame has gotten a lot better as the season has gone along too. Um, to me, this game really comes down to which side wins the ball. Will it be Spencer Rattler in the Gamecock offense, or will it be Marcus Freeman's Fighting Irish defense? I'm going to go ahead and rely on the Fighting Irish defense to get this one done. South Carolina is going to fight. South Carolina is going to be competitive. This is going to be a very close competitive game. I do, however, think that South Carolina uh, is going to fall just short uh, in this one. Notre Dame wins that game. And the Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl, didn't have to think about this one much. I'm going to go ahead and take the Ohio Bobcats. The Mid-American runner, runners-up have been very impressive so far this season. And for the Wyoming Cowboys, it's been a lot better of a season than I think a lot of people thought Wyoming was going to have this season. Uh, but I do not think they're going to come away with a win here in the Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl. So uh, moving past that one pretty quick. That's a New Year's Six Bowl game. Again, I'll predict that in a separate video. Same thing with the All-State Sugar Bowl. All right, moving on to the Music City Bowl now, where we have the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Kentucky Wildcats. Quite simply, I just don't think that Iowa's offense is going to be able to keep up with the way that Kentucky's defense uh, has played. I know Kentucky will not have Will Levis in this game. Graham Mertz, of course, who has transferred there, is not eligible to play yet. So uh, th th this Iowa defense has been pretty good this year, uh, but, I, but I do not think that offense is going to stack up and score enough points to be able to uh, pull off a win here against Kentucky, who can play some pretty solid defense themselves. So I'm going with the Wildcats to win the Music City Bowl. Uh, all right, playoff semifinals. We'll be predicting those in a separate video as well. Just heartbreak when I see that logo right now. Mississippi State just lost their head coach, Mike Leach, uh, and have named defensive coordinator Zach Arnett full-time head coach. They will still be playing in the really equestable against the Illinois Fighting Illini. And let me tell you something. This Mississippi State team is going to fight, and they're going to fight hard. Illinois is going to play hard as well, and they're going to try their best to win this game. Um, but I'm not going to go against what Mississippi State is going to be capable of here to win this game. I think the passion, the energy that they're going to play with for their now um, uh, for their uh, previous head coach who has passed away, I think is going to be like no other you've ever seen in college football. Give me the Bulldogs to finish off a really good season in honor of the Pirate Mike Leach. Uh, as I believe we have just one more non-New Year's Six Bowl game to predict. Cotton Bowl Classic, of course, the New Year's Six Bowl game. All right, here it is. The Cheez-It Citrus Bowl against playing LSU Tigers and the Purdue Boiler Makers. Uh, Purdue will not have head coach Jeff Brom in this game. And LSU uh, just coming off an, an SEC championship loss. However, a lot of time to prepare for this Purdue team. I think LSU has got more talent, definitely has um, the better roster here. Um, and uh, Purdue, again, without Jeff Brom, uh, I don't really see Purdue being able to win this game. Purdue may make this game close, but I do think that LSU is going to come in here and be able to win the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. And I do believe that is the... Uh, yep, it is. It is definitely the last game there. So, uh, hey, that is going to do it for my bowl game predictions there. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a little slow scroll here uh, for the, uh, for you guys to kind of recap my predictions. What What's going on with my mouse? All right, there we go. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, if you like college football content, please consider uh, liking, subscribing, anything like that to help support my channel really does mean a whole lot to me. And I just want to thank you guys so much for, for the support, 
uh, the, the just the, the tremendous amount of growth on my channel uh, this season and even this past off season has been amazing. So I really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for every single view, like, and comment that you have given me this year. Uh, again, I will still be posting uh, live recaps to these bowl games as they happen. You'll probably get one or two or possibly maybe even three every day if I am not busy. I am taking a vacation uh, this year. We're going to go to Ohio and visit family uh, again. But hey, uh, all that aside, really appreciate what you guys have done from this channel. Continue to like, comment, subscribe, anything like that to help support my channel. And if you forget anything else in this video, remember this. Remember to play hard and tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.